The STS-6 mission is a mission of many firsts. It's the first flight of the Space Shuttle Orbiter Challenger, the first flight of the lightweight external tank, which carries the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for the main engines on the orbiter. Altogether, the weight savings uh, are significant, increasing the cargo car carrying capability. 20,000 pounds altogether has been saved compared with the last launch of the Columbia orbiter. This is also the first use of the higher thrust main engines on the orbiter. They will be operating at 104 percent rather than 100 percent of rated thrust. Another first scheduled for this flight will be the exiting of the crew compartment by mission specialists Dr. Story Musgrave and Donald Peterson to spend three and a half hours moving about the cargo bay in the cold vacuum of space. The countdown clock about five seconds away from picking up the count. We are holding the clock at the T minus nine minute point uh, while we uh, uh, check on the uh, on the booster system. The NASA test director is in the process of checking with the booster test conductor to determine whether or not there is a problem. Okay, we have gotten a go to pick up the clock, and we will pick up in 10 seconds at the T minus nine minute point. Approximately five seconds. Three, two, one, T minus nine minutes and counting. The launch events are now being controlled by the ground launch sequencer. From now up to T minus 25 seconds when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is part of the processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers, which then report back to the launch processing system when the commands have been executed. The primary job of the computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria, such as propellant loads, temperatures, pressures, and other measurements, are proper. The launch and recovery director has ordered the chase planes to take off. Coming up on the eight minute point in the countdown. T minus eight minutes and counting. Everything proceeding smoothly towards an on time liftoff at 1.30. The liquid oxygen fill and drain valve in the external tank has been closed and topping of the tank completed. Liquid oxygen drain back has been started. This means that liquid oxygen is flowing through the main propulsion system and back to the large storage tank to cool the system down slowly to 270 degrees below zero so they'll not be shocked by the torrent of super cold fluid. T minus seven minutes, 27 seconds and counting. At the T minus seven minute point, the crew access arm will retract and is in the process of retracting right now. This is the walkway used by the astronauts to get from the service structure to the orbiter. If an emergency should arise, that tower can be put back in position within 15 seconds. T minus seven minutes and counting. Like other things in the countdown today, we have been just slightly ahead of schedule uh, as we go down uh, towards a liftoff. T minus six minutes, 30 seconds and counting. At the six minute point, the crew will perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start which consists, consists of positioning a number of switches and verifying that they are in the proper position. 
then throwing the three propellant isolation valve switches, which allow the hydrazine fuel to start flowing from the tanks toward the APUs. Coming up on the six minute point, T minus six minutes and counting. The pilot, Carol Bobko, has been asked to perform the APU pre start. T minus five minutes, 49 seconds and counting. T minus five minutes, 40 seconds and counting. The flight recorders are on. The flight recorders provide measurements of the shuttle system performance during the entire mission for playback after landing. T minus five minutes, 25 seconds and counting. Everything going smoothly towards our liftoff. And we have a go for APU start. Coming up on the five minute point. T minus five minutes and counting. I have go for APU start. APU start is in uh, work. The APUs or auxiliary power units provide hydraulic power to move the aero surfaces and main engines for steering. The astronauts have closed their visors. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The firing circuit for the solid rocket boosters ignition and range safety destruct devices has been armed by a ground launch sequencer command. This is accomplished by a motor driven switch called an arm and safe device. The system is then inhibited to prevent premature ignition. Uh, T minus four minutes, five seconds and counting. The main fuel valve heaters have been turned off in preparation for engine start. The main engines on the orbiter will actually be started at the T minus 6.8 second point. It takes three seconds for them to reach 90% thrust, at which time the solid motor ignition sequence starts. T minus three minutes, 40 seconds and counting. The Elevon speed brake and rudders are now being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to ensure that they're capable of doing their jobs during flight. T minus three minutes, 27 seconds and counting. The shuttle is now on internal power. However, the fuel cells are still receiving some fuels from ground support equipment for another minute. T minus three minutes, 13 seconds and counting. The profile checks of the aero surfaces is complete and verified, and the aero surfaces are in launch position. Coming up on the three minute point, T minus three minutes and counting, the engine gimbal or movement check of the main engines is underway. The liquid oxygen valve for filling the external tank is closed and pressurization has begun. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds. The gaseous oxygen vent arm is being retracted. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The fuel cells ground supply of oxygen and hydrogen has been terminated and the vehicle now on its onboard supply. The beanie cap or gaseous, gaseous oxygen vent arm carries away vapors from the oxygen tank while the tank is full on the pad. Coming up on the two minute point in our countdown, the main engines have been moved to their start position and the astronauts have cleared the caution and warning memories. T minus one minute, 56 seconds, and the liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed. Flight pressurization is underway. T minus one minute, 45 seconds. At this point, the computer automatically verifies the readiness of the main engine. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank uh, is now reaching flight pressure in approximately five seconds from now. T minus one minute, 20 seconds and counting.
The liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. Coming up on the one minute point in our countdown. T minus one minute and counting. The firing system for the sound suppression water system is armed. T minus 55 second and the hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices are used to ensure any hydrogen uh, flowing through the engines prior to engine ignition does not accumulate. T minus 40 seconds and counting. We are just seconds away from switching command of the countdown to the onboard computers. T minus 30 seconds and counting. We are go for auto sequence start. The hydraulic power units on the SRBs have started. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We'll go for main engine ignition. 7, 6, we have main engine ignition. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Lift off of the orbit of Challenger and the sixth flight of the space shuttle. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Challenger, yeah, I'm going to hold it in altitude, uh, downrange 22 nautical miles. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. SRP-7 was at some. We have an awful lot of crud on the windows at SRP-7, Dick. Roger, we copy that. Challenger, your first day's performance was nominal. Guidance has converged, velocity now 6,000 feet per second, altitude uh, 31 miles, Challenger is 46 miles downrange. Challenger, you have two engine tail capability. Two engine tail. Challenger now capable of a transatlantic abort to Dakar Airport on Africa's west coast if one main engine fails. Three minutes elapsed time, velocity 6,800 feet per second, altitude 39 miles, Challenger 70 miles downrange. All three main engines still at 104%. Challenger's go at three minutes, 15 seconds. Flight Director Jay Green taking a status check at all positions prior to Challenger reaching negative return point. He's 7,800 feet per second, 47 miles altitude.
Challenger, your negative return. Press negative return. Challenger no longer able to return to the Kennedy Space Center. Challenger is 127 miles downrange at an altitude of 50 nautical miles, velocity 8,700 feet per second. Four minutes, 25 seconds elapsed. Velocity 9,500 feet per second. Altitudes 53 and a half miles, 165 miles downrange. Challenger still go, all systems. All three main engines still at 104%. Velocity 10,400 feet per second. Altitude 55 miles, downrange 196 nautical miles. Standing by for Press D'Amico. Challenger, Press D'Amico. Press D'Amico, normal throttle. That Press to main engine cutoff call tells spacecraft commander Paul Weitz that Challenger can now continue uphill if one main engine fails. Green polling all positions. All controllers reporting everything looks great. Five minutes, 40 seconds. Challenger, you have single engine tail capability. Single engine tail. Challenger now capable of reaching Dakar Airport if two main engines fail. Velocity 13,900 feet per second, altitudes 58 nautical miles, downrange 321 nautical miles. Time for main engine cutoff computed for 8 minutes 20 seconds. Velocity 15,000 feet per second, altitudes 58 nautical miles, downrange 364 nautical miles. Six and a half minutes elapsed time. Velocity up to 17,000 feet per second. Still at 58 nautical miles. Challenger 433 nautical miles downrange. Seven minutes elapsed time. Challenger, your single engine press to Miko. Single engine press, thank you. That call tells the crew to press on even if two main engines shut down early. Challenger's velocity uh, nearing 20,000 feet per second. 529 miles downrange at an altitude of 58.1 nautical miles. Main engine cutoff still computed for 8 minutes, 20 seconds. Twenty-three thousand feet per second. Altitude's 58 and a half miles. Downrange 629 nautical miles. Eight minutes. Master Alarm, Kevin at Mr. Light, Houston. We copy. Cabin atmosphere, Master Alarm. Twenty-five thousand feet per second. We go. We got a Miko. Roger, we copy and no problem with your cabin atmosphere. Phenomenal, Miko.
touchdown time at uh, five days, zero hours, 23 minutes, 42 seconds. Stop at 32 past the uh, minute. 